and welcome back to Clean Code and Programming Principles, the Ultimate Beginner's Guide. My name is Spiros, this is the Programming Duck Channel, and in this video we're going to look at abstraction and don't repeat yourself. So what is abstraction and don't repeat yourself? So generally in code, when we have multiple instances of code doing similar things, we generally want to refactor them into a single abstraction. So instead of having the multiple ones, we have one now. And if they do exactly the same thing, that's fine. We can just have a single abstraction and not accept any arguments. But if they do slightly different things, then we accept arguments for the differences. And why do we do this? What's the motivation for keeping our code dry like that? And it's for a few reasons. One of them is that it reduces the amount of code we need to write. So, you know, if we have some functionality that we need to use, instead of writing it from scratch yet again, we can just import it or whatever, or reuse it from somewhere. So we don't have to write as much code. The second thing, and perhaps more important reason, is that if we need to change how that functionality works, and we, we have it in 10 places, then we need to go in and change every single one of those 10 places. And remember, we're actually bad with repetitive work, so that is quite a difficult thing to do. But of course, if we have a single abstraction instead, there is no issue. We just change it in that one single place, and we're good to go. So the change is much easier that way. And finally, it results in much better code organization. Because imagine, if we have the same functionality, in five or 10 different places or something all over the code base, if someone is looking for that functionality, they may not know where to look, because obviously if it's in five places, it's not in a sensible place. They may find it, they may not, and whether they do or not, it's still scattered and quite badly organized. But on the other hand, if we have a single abstraction instead, then we can put it in a single place where it makes sense. So that way anyone else that wants to look for it can just go to that place and there it is. So yeah, so for these reasons, and maybe even more, we want code nice and dry. Okay, so how do we make code dry? So we already went over this a tiny bit, but basically it's just as it sounds like. If you see multiple instances of code doing a similar thing, you take them, you refactor them into a single abstraction, and you accept arguments for the differences. So here we have an example using a for loop and the map function. So just to describe the code to you quickly before we start, the target function that we're looking at is the function named double array. And as the name implies, it takes an array, it doubles every element of the array, and then it returns the result to us. So if we just walk through the code quickly, it's very simple. It, we just create a new array to store the result. We have a for loop to iterate through every single element of the array, and then we double every element, then we add it to the result, and then at the end of the for loop, we return the new array, which is the result. So this kind of pattern, as you might imagine, shows up hundreds of times, if not even thousands of times, all over code bases, all over the world. It's an extremely common pattern. And that's fine, but then we can do the version on the right instead using a map function. So here, we've created a function called map, which very simply does what the for loop did. And of course, because every for loop will do one thing different, right? So in our code, the for loop doubled every element, but obviously in every other for loop, it might do something else. So that's why the map function accepts an argument, the parameter fn, for those differences. Other than that, it does exactly what the for loop does on the left. So it creates a new array and assigns it to result, it iterates through every element of the array that we receive, and it calls the function with every element. And then it adds the new element onto the result and then just returns the result. So, you know, pretty simple code there. And then if you look at our double array function, now it's a one-liner. So it's, it's much nicer. There is much less code there. And the thing to notice here is that if we have for loops like these, all over the code base, say like 100 for loops, if we use map instead, which we can do now, we save on a tremendous amount of code. So that's one of the benefits of abstraction and dry. Now we mentioned other benefits as well. And one of the important ones is that it makes changes easier. So unfortunately with this example, you won't get to see that because the function map is a universally defined function in programming. It doesn't change. It always does the exact same thing. However, imagine, 
if this wasn't map, if this was just another function that you used commonly in your code base, which might change. And then instead of, again, making that change 10 times all around your code base, which is fairly difficult, now you would need to make the change one time in one place. So this is much less error prone. So along with that, we also have the rule of three that we need to keep in mind. And the rule of three is basically a precautionary principle against abstracting too early. So the rule of three basically states that you should be careful of refactoring on the second occurrence. It may be best to wait until you have three occurrences of similar code before you refactor them. And there are a few reasons for this. The main one is because if you refactor on the second occurrence, yes, those two pieces of code may be doing a similar thing, but it's very possible that tomorrow they may diverge, which means they may do different things tomorrow. And that's fine. You can handle that in your single abstraction, but the resulting code is going to be messier than if you had kept those two separated in the first place. So maybe you can imagine, you have two pieces of code that do similar things, you refactor them into a single abstraction, but now if they change how they work tomorrow, they do different things tomorrow, you're gonna need if else statements, and it's gonna be a lot messier. This single abstraction is going to be messier than if you had your two separate abstractions and you just change those two differently. So that's one reason. The second thing about this is that if you wait until the third occurrence before you refactor, then it's more likely that this single abstraction is not going to diverge in the future. Because if three pieces of code need to do the same thing, it's a much more solid, a much more concrete abstraction. Whereas if only two pieces of code do the same thing, it may just be temporary, it may just be chance, it may change tomorrow. So yeah, you increase your chance that you create a good abstraction if you wait until the third occurrence. And then the third big reason about this is that even if they do diverge, it's going to be less work for you. So you wait until the third occurrence to refactor, and now one of the occurrences diverges. But that's fine because you can extract the diverged one and you can keep the combined abstraction for the other two. You know, so this is this is not a lot of work. You extract one and you keep, you still keep this. But on the other hand, if you combine on the second occurrence and now one of them diverges, you will have to separate both of them, you know, because if you separate one, you, you have to fix this one as well. Basically, it's less work if you wait until the third occurrence and they diverge than if you don't. So this slide is just an example of showing why you don't necessarily want to refactor on the second occurrence. So if you look at the slide, we have two functions. We have the function validate username and the function validate password. And right now they both do exactly the same thing. But it's extremely easy to understand how tomorrow username and password may need completely different validation. For example, the password may require the string to have special characters, but the username may forbid special characters. So it would probably be a mistake to refactor these now into the version on the right because it's extremely likely that those will diverge in the future. And then we're going to have the situation we spoke about before where you're going to have to do even more work to separate them and all that stuff. So yeah, this is why you may want to follow the rule of three. Finally, as always, remember to be pragmatic. The rule of three is nice, but don't follow it to such an extreme that it destroys your code. For example, imagine that you have two pieces of code that are very complex. So every time you need to make a change to one of them, that change is very complicated. And guess what? You need to make the change again. So very error prone, very complicated stuff. So in this case, it might be absolutely worth it to combine those into a single abstraction. Because if you have to make one very complicated change instead of two very complicated changes, that might be an amazing benefit for your project. And it very well might be worth the risk that you're gonna to need to put in extra work tomorrow to separate them again. That's fine. Use your professional judgment and consider what is best for your project overall over time and follow that. Okay, so that's it for this principle. This was quite a short one and hopefully easy to understand. And I hope you found this video useful. So if you did, then please click the like button. And if you would like to be notified of the next videos in this series as they're uploaded or more videos like this, then please subscribe. It really helps the channel when you do those things. 
And if you have any comments or even counter arguments, then please leave a comment below. All right, thanks very much and see you in the next one.